Hi there, my name's David. I'm giving you a tutorial on FM synthesis. Basically, I want you to understand what FM synthesis is actually doing, and maybe I'll help you make some sounds. So, first we'll load in an operator and a spectrum. Um, so, FM synthesis is a lot like assigning an LFO to the pitch, but it's a fast LFO. So, we just look at what an LFO is doing. Here's our sound. Put the LFO on. See it's moving up and down and make it move faster with this and the amount it moves up and down. Look at that, right? Okay. Um but you yeah, sort of notice that when you turn it up quite fast it starts sounding not like moving up and down but more like a sort of a texture. Get what I'm saying? We turn this up high. Um, and that's pretty much what FM synthesis is. So I'll show you with one of these. Here, um, instead of using the LFO move, all right, just to show you again what the LFO was doing. It's, it's just like, that there is just like me going. I'm just changing the pitch, right? So instead of using an LFO to do that, we use one of these oscillators. Um, just to show you that it's the same. Um, what we can do is turn that on to fixed. Um, this here is the frequency it's going to um, operate at, and then this is the multiplier. So uh, 100 times 0.1 is 10 hertz. This is going to be at 10 hertz. Let's turn that down to 10. So that's um, 10 times 0.1 is 1 hertz. Um, you can see it's slightly moving up and down. So the difference between LFO and FM synthesis is that the amount's a lot more. Yeah, that's quite a lot compared to... So that's pretty subtle at one hertz, but when we turn it up... I can't help but think that the amount also changes. I think there it might be you know, because here the amount is in decibels, whereas there it's like a percentage. Can't help but think that it's more dramatic at higher speeds or something. But yeah. Um, but when we're doing FM synthesis, we usually don't make it fixed like that. Um, instead, it's um, to do with ratios. So I'll explain the ratios now. So here, all right. Um, my bass note on it's a C3, I think. Yep, it's a C3, 250 hertz ish, right? Um, and set, so, yeah, so that's my bass note. Um, so two times the bass note is going to be two times 250 hertz, about 500 hertz, right? All right, two times that again, or three times that's going to be 750 hertz. Yep, you see that? There's the, the numbers there. Right. Okay, um, so uh, what this means here, right, um, I'm playing a sine wave at 250 hertz, and then if I turn B on, like that, then B is going to be moving the pitch of A up and down at 250 hertz. And that's what it sounds like. If I turn this up, then it's going to be, B's going to be moving the uh, pitch up and down at 500 hertz. Or I can move it down, and it'll be moving at 250, uh, sorry, 125 hertz. Right. So generally, you can see there that the higher the ratio, then the higher pitched it sounds, and the lower ratio, the lower it sounds. Um, um, and another way, because this is as far down as it goes, it only goes down to 0. Um, five. So if we want to make that ratio um, lower, then what we do instead is turn this one up, um, and then we have to turn the octave down. So I just press Z to change down another octave, um, and get that right. We maybe do it again, right? Down another octave. Let's do it even one more time. Right, and it starts sounding like an LFI. All right, that's pretty interesting, right? 
All right, so let's turn that back down to four. All right. Okay, uh, so a quick note on routing. Um, so if we click here, these are all our different routing options. Uh, what this means, all in a line here, means B is modulating A, C is modulating B, D is modulating C, right? Um, now, whereas if we click this one, then that just means A is going straight out, B is going straight out, C is going straight out, D is going straight out, right? We, uh... Oh, okay, that's not going to sound like anything. Uh, let's turn that one on to a... Uh, right, A, A, B, both of them. Right. Um, whereas if it's like this, A, B doesn't sound like anything by itself because it needs A to be mod to, to carry the signal. Both of them. Alright, um, let's turn that back to the side. So, yeah. Um, and similarly, if I've got, see, they're all in a line. C. Let's turn that one up to maybe three. If I turn B off, then C doesn't have anything to modulate. Um, so it's just going to play A. Alright. Um, All right, so um, let's make a sound, eh? Um, so, like I said, right, so that's sounding, I like it one more down, I think. Sounds pretty good. I quite like making these kind of grindy, kind of bassy um, sort of sounds, sort of paddy sounds, I think. Yeah, so we got that, sounds all right. Yeah, like that. So the sound sounds quite sort of smooth and normal um, when they're all in perfect ratios like this. But if you make them slightly out of tune, then they uh, sound wobbly. So I quite like to put them a little bit um, out of tune like that, so it makes it sound interesting, right? Um, and then um, pretty much the next thing is just with the envelopes. Um, so what you can hear with, um, if I just go back, so you know, standard envelope, right? It's going to change the volume, right? Let's go. But you hear with um with FM synthesis, although that it's more it's not really louder. It kind of is louder, but anyway, point is is that using the envelopes is a good way to get that range of texture. So um Yep. Yeah. 
and then we turn this one back on. I like it. Right, so that sounded a bit much toward the end there, so let's put some decay on it. Um, So decayed, right? See, all right. Mm. I quite often like using this routing option um, because it gives you that uh, sort of the two tier, you know, C modulating B modulating A, and then it also allows you to directly modulate A again with this one. Um, that sounds pretty reasonable right and then you can just sort of interesting it up with um with you know something like this video um, I hope that helped mm.